Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about being a beginner and mistakes. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what mistakes did you make when you were a beginner programmer? And the short answer is all of them. So, so, so many. But I'll narrow it down to the things that at least I think were the biggest mistakes. Let me explain. So when I first started out programming, I pretty much fell into the same sort of pit of problems that I tried to warn some of you about. And the biggest pit that I fell into was, well, pretty much that I thought that the words of more experienced programmers, or at the very least people I thought were more experienced, were absolute. I read best practices and suggestions on how I should approach different problems as absolute truths and with no gray zone and of course also without knowing whether or not what someone suggesting to, was suggesting was actually applicable to my situation. Now, this is very common. I see it very, very often because as you can imagine, when you are a beginner, the first and most foremost thing that is important to a beginner programmer is usually this question. Am I doing things the right way? That's the number one thing. It's the number one thing for most people when they start with anything. They're looking for confirmation if they're playing the game by the rules. And the problem with software development is that there are rules, but they're very subjective and kind of loose. And it's not that easy to strictly define what good practices are and what bad practices are because there's room for discussion on what good and bad practices actually do mean. And that is a very frustrating thing when you're a beginner because you don't really know all these subtle little nuances to rules and some things are true in some cases and some true things are true in other cases. And sometimes it's really hard to define very, very strictly and say that, oh, well, this is always true, but that's the thing, right? It depends because it always depends. And the way to answer when something is true and when it's not true is, I'm very sorry to say, through trial and error and experience to get the sensation of when something is a good idea and what's, when something is a bad idea. And you achieve that goal by fucking up enough times. And that's exactly how I solved this problem. That's exactly what I did. I fucked up so many times and I followed the advice of people who I'm not saying that there was any malicious intent behind it all. It's just that I did not understand when to use something correctly and when to not use it. So I just, very similar to someone who wants to learn how to cook, I used all the spices instead of taking a pinch of things and having a, a, a more conservative look or a very cons a more conservative perspective on how I should apply these different tools and practice and so on and so forth. Without knowing any better, I just poured everything into my uh, into my uh, my pot and the dish was completely ruined. And so that's a definitely the biggest mistakes that I, mistake, mistake I made. I can still remember how I tried to create a small little application with which was basically just a single entity CRUD system where I literally, and this was for school at that time, where the idea was that we were just supposed to put up a web page where someone could list a few records, store a new record and edit a record and then remove a record if necessary. That was it, that was the whole system. And the first thing I did was to start structuring my code as a monorepo and I tried to break everything out into microservices. I hadn't even at that time learned what the load balancer was, so I didn't really, I was unsure how I would solve this one. And I made it so complicated that I near on missed the deadline for the hand in. Same thing went when I had my first job. I was very sure that test-driven development was the only way to live. And that was a rule to live. There was a strict rule that you should always do test-driven development. 
100% because I've been taught at that time that this was how you did everything because if you listen to a single test driven development evangelist, they will talk as if this is a given. They will speak as if this is what everybody does when the reality is, which I understood much later, that most people don't work in a test driven fashion. It's a suggestion. It's actually a, even less than a suggestion. It's an ideal. It's an ideal that people push that is in no way true for va the vast majority of the industry. It's something very similar to how people say that it's a given that everybody donates money to wealth, uh, uh, to uh, different uh, organizations for helping out with saving the cats or saving the beetles or saving the kids or the tigers or whatever. And that's just not how the world works. There are people who do it, but the vast majority of people don't do that. Test driven development was the same thing. But I went in with the mindset that this was the only way to do something. And as you can imagine, that was not a really great idea when you start working for a very, very small startup where we literally had so little money that it was hard to tell if we would have enough cash to produce a money, a money or revenue producing application within the time frame. So as you can imagine, it wasn't really a very popular suggestion from my bosses when I suggested said that, well, I'm going to work in a test driven fashion. And my boss at that time went, well, well, no, that's going to take a lot of time. And of course, me as the junior developer who now know everything, well, I'm going to doubt my manager or my boss because I know that the people who told me about test driven development, they're also going to say that, oh, you know what, your coworkers, it's almost like a little cult. Your coworkers are going to doubt you and they're going to give you these and these reasons as to why you should, why you should, shouldn't use test driven development. But here are all of these other reasons that you, without any context or understanding of what I'm saying, is going to apply blindly and then use them as a, as a counter our argument. So protect your, your, your idea of test driven development by saying that an example is that, oh, but every test that is written is going to reduce the total time that we spend on bugs and etc, etc, etc. So of course, I go into an argument with a person who has been working for, yeah, well, 10 years more than me, at least, uh, without any understanding. And uh, finally, I just have to fold and I'm very frustrated about the whole thing. And now many years later, I realized that I was Oh, wrong. I was so wrong. So, so, so wrong. Because the reality of the situation was very different from, from what I had been told. So this is by far and wide the biggest mistake that I've ever made. And as a beginner, and I mean, it doesn't really end there. Of course, I've fucked up in many other areas as well. Another area would have been, well, I did truly believe that the best thing for my career was to just focus on the coding and just be try to try my best to always just write the best software possible as i was saying according to the rules and it's just that's just not the way how I, it just it's just not the way to gain success what i found that helps the most with becoming a really good software developer is to have a knowledge of how all the tools work. You have to be a problem solver. You have to know how to solve these different issues that you need that you face in your work. But you also have to have a holistic perspective on the work that you do. You have to have a bit of an eagle eyes view and understand the bigger picture. Because if you don't, then these suggestions and best practices that you are supposed to use as a sprinkle, they become absolute doctrines that you follow uh, religiously without actually understanding why. You don't understand why. You have all these rules that you just follow because you believe that if you just follow them hard enough, you're going to be, <coughs> be a good software developer. And at the end of the day, that boils down to personal insecurity. If you are insecure, un, uh, uh, unable to see what makes you a good software developer, then it's a very easy and convenient thing to just follow the rules of somebody else. So what I want you to take away from this is that the big, biggest mistake that I made as a beginner, at the very least, was to believe that 
these suggestions and these best practices so that, that these were strict rules this is how you did it i didn't know any better so i thought that if i just did what everybody said was the best thing to do as a software developer and i picked the tools that everybody was saying was the best thing then i would be a good software developer and all that really gave me was an introduction which was very good into a lot of different concepts i had to learn a fuck ton of stuff and at the same time, a lot of pain and misery and issues where I could have had a completely different path. But I do believe that at the end of the day, you have to go through that process in a sense, because when you start out, you simply don't know any better. And you have to burn your fingers a few times on these different practices and ideas to understand how to actually use them. Because some of them are always true and most of them are only applicable in certain situations and you need to learn when those situations arise. Have a great day.